Hi, this is Bobby Lyon, best-selling author of Embrace the Chaos. Today, I want to talk to you about uncertainty and how difficult that can be and how to overcome uncertainty when you're facing uncertainty in your job, in your career, in your workplace, and in your life. You know, I went through a lot of uncertainty over the years as I saw this environment change in my corporate career, in my job. You know, things were changing all around me. We had, uh, you know, mergers, acquisitions in my company, and we there was a lot of change going on. Every single day I'd walk into work and there was something new that was happening. And it was overwhelming and it created a lot of stress and anxiety about the future. And I, I, I felt I was stuck. Even with years of success, uh, you know, I was stuck. I found myself stuck in this place and I would create these negative scenarios of what a negative future would look like. But I was, over, over, I was able to overcome a lot of that. Uh, and I want to share with you how we can overcome uncertainty when we're facing change in our job, in our workplace. And, and, and I want to sort of look at this in a couple of different ways. So first, I think that, you know, we have to really accept fundamentally that the world has changed, you know, and we, we don't accept it. We hold on to it. And I think that's where the root, a lot of our stress is that, you know, we hold on to this idea, this notion of the way we think it ought to be, you know, life ought to be this way. You know, I worked hard, you know, my, my thing was I worked really hard. You know, I grew up with nothing. I was born in poverty and moved up. You know, I, I, I got an education and, um, you know, I, I got a good job, but it was hard. It was really hard. I had no money uh, and it was, but I, but I got to succeed because I followed this, I followed this formula somebody taught me, you know, you work hard kid and you'll succeed. And that formula worked for a while. But then, you know, over the years, that formula didn't work. I was working hard in my career, but I wasn't finding success, you know? And so, because we were going through all this change in, this, in the company that was, I, was, I was in. And so, fundamentally, what I, the problem I was stressed and I found myself stuck in, and the reason was this, was that I didn't accept it. I didn't accept it. I mean, yeah, I kind of knew there was change going on, but, you know, the problem is I, I couldn't let go of this principal idea of, you know, the sun and the moon, you know, the sun comes out every morning, the moon said, you know, comes out every night, you know, this, 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 it was hardwired in my brain was this idea of you work hard and that should be good enough. You know, you work hard and that should be good enough for, you know, the people who are your managers, you know, your boss to demonstrate and the result should be good. If I work hard, the result should be success. And unfortunately, that didn't work. And so I couldn't let go of that principle, that idea of working hard was it. And so I was really struggling to figure out what that model was of, you know, how do you, you know, what is the new model? And so I had this experience, I did this trip to India and that changed my life. And I came back and I realized what, what I learned, what I had to do was, and this is the core point, number one, you know, when dealing with uncertainty is we have to learn to let go. You gotta let it go. You gotta let go of the past, the promises that were made to you. You've gotta let go of the past ideas that you know you held on to. So I had to let go of this idea of work hard equals success. You know, because everybody was working hard. And you know, you know, and there were not a lot of people were finding success. You know, in that crisis moment when there's so much going on. You know, and so what I learned to do was to fundamentally accept, and that's really the second part is to fundamentally accept that the new environment required something other than just working hard. Yes, I would have to work hard, you know, but you know, it, and not about, oh, you gotta work smart too. No, 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 it's not about just about that, but there had to be something new that I could look at and, and use as my framework to move forward in my career, in my job. And so the second part, again, is I had to learn to accept that the core principle, and again, accept what? Accept that the world had changed and that the, only control that I truly had was not of my boss, my customers, my company, you know, um, I couldn't even control my kids. So we don't have control over those things. But the only control I truly have is of my words I use, my thoughts I think, and the actions I take. That's really where power lies to change and to grow in times of uncertainty that you might be facing in your job, in your workplace. It's really to accept that the only control that we really have is of ourselves. And that is the power that was gonna set you free. And so we have to learn to accept that we cannot control the chaos. 
You can't control the chaos. You can't control the change, but you can control yourself. That's really the good news. And so I began working on myself. I couldn't focus, I, because what was happening was, I was focusing, when I was going through uncertainty in my job, I was focusing so much on, you know, the, on, on, my, on other people, on the company, on the process of, you know, who got promoted, who got let go, who didn't let go, all these different things. I was focusing on all these external factors, all these other things outside of me, when fundamentally what I needed to do and I, I eventually learned to do was to focus on myself, fix myself, change myself in order to adapt to this new environment. So again, you know, going back to the point of how can you, you know, you know, deal with uncertainty and, and grow in these uncertain times that you live in, in your workplace, in your job, your career, you know, I think first you have to let go of the past. Second is accept that you're living in a new world and that, you know, the core reason why we get so stressed about it is because we don't have control over a lot of things. But the good news is, you know, we have control over ourselves. And so accept that control relies and the power lies with us. The third, in uncertainty, you know, what typically happens with uncertainty, and I used to have this, so what I would do is I'd walk into the office, my corporate office, I'd been there for a long time, uh, you know, 15 years, 17 years, something at that time. Overall, I was with, you know, in corporate America for 23 years, one of the biggest companies in the world. And uh, I had a lot of success, but you know, uncertainty makes you crazy. You know, I'd walk into my corporate office at the world headquarters of this Fortune 50 company in New York City, Midtown, 42nd Street, I would swipe my corporate ID and I would hope the green light would turn on. You know, it was so sad, it was so bad. I felt so stressed and anxious every time I'd walk in because so much, you know, so much had changed. And I didn't believe myself, I had low confidence, I didn't believe in myself. Even though I was such a confident, you know, successful person, you know, uncertainty makes you crazy. And so to me, what I realized I had to do was, and this is, you know, point three here, is to, in that uncertainty of my environment, I had to create certainty of a positive future. I had to give myself hope. I had to. I had no other choice, you know, because what was happening was the uncertainty was creating all these negative situations in my head about doom, death, destruction. You know, I was going to be kicked out. I was going to be on the, out, out in the street, you know. All these scenarios were being created in my head none of which would eventually come true, none of which came true. And so what I had to do was to create certainty by giving myself some idea, some sense of something positive that I could look forward to every morning. So what I did was I said, I decided, all right, you know what, hook a crook, if I'm gonna get you know, laid off or cut or reorganize, reshuffle, you know, all that change, hook a crook. I'm going to bring in one big partner okay, into our company, into, I was, uh, into my job. You know, one big external partnership, one big deal I was gonna bring in. And I didn't know what that looked like, but I just knew that that was gonna happen. I just felt like, I'm like, that's gonna, that's, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make a mark and I'm gonna make something happen, okay? And I don't know, you know, how I'm gonna get there, but this is what I'm gonna do. And so I had that clearly defined in my head. It was not a number, it wasn't like, oh, I'm gonna bring in 10% of business or anything like that. It was like more of an outcome of what a positive, you know, a deal or positive, you know, uh, project would look like. And so I'd say, and that's part of my job is to build partnerships. So I was gonna say, you know, I'm gonna bring in one big partner into the organizations at a company. And I'll tell you what, that saved me. That saved me because what it did was, it, instead of focusing so much every single morning, every single night, every single day on the negatives of that change, of that uncertainty, I focused on what I could potentially do to bring myself success. And what it did was it shifted my mind from all these negative things that were happening, all these terrible doom and gloom scenarios, and something positive and productive and useful. And what that did was it got me out of bed in the morning, early, bright and early, and I began talking to a lot of people. I began speaking to friends and colleagues and other people outside you know, the company and the organization, started meeting with people and saying, look, I, you know, I have an idea, so I'm thinking about, and guess what happened? I had met this, you know, friend of mine. His name is Bob. Also, and Bob said, Bob, you know, hey, Miglani, you have to talk to Steve. Steve would be a really interesting person. At that time, you know, this 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 guy, this friend of friend, was working in another organization, and so I had a meeting with him. And it turned out he, they, that organization was going through similar issues. And so what we decided to do was to develop a partnership 
That became my partnership. We spent about a year and a half putting it all together, doing a lot of hard work into it. But eventually I did bring in, the result was I was able to bring in a partner and to find success and I grew in my career and so on. But the point of this is in uncertainty, what happens is we create these negative scenarios of doom and gloom. You know, our mind is wired from millions of years, right? And so we create this, this, uh, this scarcity problem and we huddle back and we go within. What I'm suggesting to you, what you do is to create a vision of some sort of goal that you want. You know, I don't mean like, oh, I want to make a million dollars, you know, in you know, two years. Not, the only, not something so, you know, um, financial per se, because that's very difficult to pull, pull you forward. But really about solving a problem. You know, what is a problem that you think could be solved? You know, what is an area that you're curious about? You know, what is um, a, a, a path that you want to explore, you know, in your career, job, in your life, you know, is something that you think, you know what, I, th I like to be able to do this. What's my wish list? And then write the outcome, write yourself achieving that. Write down a scenario of actually achieving that, of getting that done. And the reason we do that is because outcomes pull us forward. Goals don't do as much. Okay, and what I mean with goals and outcomes, you talk about it in a couple of other videos that, that I'll share the link with, but you know, a goal is, hey, I wanna lose 15 pounds by the end of the year, okay? And that's not gonna get you out in the morning to go on the, you know, the treadmill or to run outside in the street and go to the gym, because that's very hard to do. But what I think, the outcome is more powerful, and the outcome is this. You know, it's Thanksgiving, you go upstairs, you come down, you put on your favorite pair of jeans, you smile because you fit so well in those jeans. You come downstairs and everyone says, hey Bob, you look great, you lost all this weight. You know, you feel good, you look good. Your people are telling you, you know, positive things like, hey, how'd you lose all that weight? You look phenomenal, right? That's the outcome of having lost 15 pounds. And so what is compelling for us to get out of bed in the morning is that visual. You're visualizing right now, I know it. I see you visualizing, you know, somebody losing weight, right? Human beings like visuals. We like visuals because it give, we like stories. We like stories. Human beings like good stories. How we, that's why we watch movies and all these, you know, these books and these fiction. So in, when you're facing uncertainty, give yourself something certain by reimagining what your future looks like, okay? Write down a clear, idea, a story of what you want your life to look like in a year's time, okay? And what that does is it helps you move you in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening towards that goal. And what happens is when you give your mind a very specific visual, the mind will help you figure out the how. The mind will help you figure out the how. There's something called the reticular activating system in your head. A lot of people talk about this. You can look it up. And what that does is it fil it's a filter for your brain. It filters out only the relevant, important things so you could go at it like a, like a missile, really focused on it, okay? And so that's what having a clear goal outcome will do to help you improve uncertainty. All right, let me, let me, let me talk to you about one more thing that I think is really important when you're facing uncertainty in your workplace, okay? And, and, and that is more of sort of a body, you know, sort of thing. You know, we talked here about strategies, and but I want to talk about the mind and the body. You know, one of the ways I reduced uncertainty, the anxiety that's caused by uncertainty, is I had to give up coffee. You know, I gave up coffee, a caffeine, early in the morning. I gave it up because I woke up one day with tinnitus and it's this ring in my ear and you get from stress and other things and, and coffee and salt and sugar and all this stuff. And it's a ringing in your ear. It's a beep. It's like a beep sound that never goes away. Yeah, it never goes away. And I went to the doctor and they told me that, you know, he told me that basically you've got it for life and you kind of have to learn to live with it. But he told me to reduce caffeine, all these different things. It was hard. Giving up coffee took me two months. You know, I did it. Cold turkey. I had these massive headaches. I was down. I was, you know, it was, you know, it was really, really sad. It was just tough to do. But I gave it up. And ultimately what I discovered is that, you know, I, I didn't need it, but I needed something to do in the morning to give me energy. So I started exercising, I started working out and I started running and they boosted my energy to incredible levels. And today, you know, what I found is I still have tinnitus, but I got used to it. You got, you get, a, human beings can adapt to anything. 
You know, we can adapt to anything. We just don't know it yet. And so what my body learned to do was to adapt to this tinnitus. So I sort of, you know, I don't focus on it. It's sort of there, but I don't focus on it. And what I did was giving up that caffeine and starting exercising in the morning really helped reduce the anxiety and the stress that goes along with uncertainty when you're facing change in, you know, in the workplace. And so I would encourage you to think about, you know, how can you boost your energy levels, your, your, your biochemistry to change that. And then, so that's, you know, one of the things I did was to reduce caffeine. The second thing I did was start exercising and physical, you know, difficult exercises, you know, in the morning, you know, running outside, very simple thing, right? Um, the third is, is morning meditation or pairs or moments of silence that you can have, you know, put sort of airplane mode on your phone just for 20 minutes. You know, I took a class on meditation. I had to learn, you know, you know, I wish I could tell you I went to India and meditated in a cave with a guy, but I, I didn't, with a guru, but I didn't. I learned it in, you know, New York City. I took a meditation class uh, and uh, it, was, it was TM uh, and it was fantastic, TM, you know, dot org, if you're interested. And it's 20 minutes of meditation. It's very simple. It's not religious, you know, it's not faith-based, you know, but it's, it, it is something that's been helpful, helpful to me. And the, and the other thing I started doing in the morning is to um, write down just ideas of opportunities, of, of, you know, of issues that I was working through, problems I wanted to solve, you know, help me think through my day. And the last thing is don't look at the news, don't look at the Twitter feed, don't look at the emails first thing in the morning. All it does is it feeds your mind a, a Big Mac, you know, in the morning and you're going to regret it all day. It just feeds seeds of doubt and dis death and destruction. Uh, so I encourage you to think about having that as part, changing your morning routines, you know, getting yourself into a place where your body can react very positively to the thoughts you put in there. Because, you know, the mind and body are combined. You're not going to have, you know, just good strategies and be okay. It, it help, it's helpful when you're facing uncertainty, especially in the workplace and changing your job, to have these kind of rituals that you do to help your body acclimate to the mind. And that's really what it is. So hopefully, you know, this video has been helpful to you. Again, my name is Bob McGlani. What I do is I help people change, transform, and grow. That's what I do. And I did this for myself over the years. I started out, I, you know, my, my background is I work. I was born in poverty. I had no money. I was born in a little village in India, middle of nowhere. No running water, barely, you know, any electricity. And, uh, but I, and I moved to America, you know, 40 something years ago. But I had this remarkable journey of working at a Dairy Queen when I was growing up, working in corporate America, and then being able to write books, and one of which is called Embrace the Chaos, which did fairly well. So I, I, I do these videos to help share in my journey in the hope that it can be helpful in your journey. With love and respect for all that you do, this is Bobby Glani. Have a great day. Take care. If you have a comment, if you have a thought, if you have an idea, please share, like my channel, uh, and, you know, and tell me what you think. Give me a comment. Okay, thanks very much. Take care.